Hey everyone. Welcome back to my Let's Play of, oh my god, sorry, I always get thrown off because uh, it always starts with no music and I'm always like, god, why isn't there any sound? Wait, anyways, welcome back to my Let's Play of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, when we last left off, we were, I think, getting to the point in the trial where Raleigh Beat confessed to moving the crime scene just because he wanted to spend his anniversary with his crazy wife, uh, which was sweet, but also, like, worrisome that a police officer did that. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was cute, but then you're like, I don't know, man, that seems even worse because of your occupation, but whatever. So we figured out that the person, I don't remember her name, Mrs. Green, actually, like, passed out, got stabbed, etc in front of the Garadub's window which means I don't know the flying book landed there maybe she went to pick it up and then I still don't think the knife hit the window came down and stabbed her in the back that just I, if that happens I might have to like take a breath and get quiet for a moment to think about what they didn't teach me in physics to allow me to think that would happen so uh, we'll see what happens I'm sure this part of the trial is gonna take a while because these two don't like to tell me the truth about anything uh, but I've been rambling so I just want to say before we go in thank you guys so much for your continued support of the series um, and your patience with my upload schedule and uh, yeah, we're just gonna jump in and see what happens. Uh, hopefully I can remember what the heck I made his voice again. Okay, I was like, are we doing the cross-examination? Not yet, we haven't heard this yet. Uh, yes, on the day you're referring to the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. If you can't recall the reason now. Knocked that candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. I uh, soon had it out though and got the window open. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Ah, oh, love. Plenty of knives around our place. Can't take notice of one or two went missing, I'm afraid. If that bolly thing in the th victim's back really was one of ours, you'll have a job proving it, I think. Oh, that was a brief testimony. My cat's meowing. I'm sorry. You chew on the cords. I can't let you in. I love you. All right. Huh. <sighs> Santa, your holiday went great. It sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your household that evening. Although, an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. <coughs> I always take a minute to get used to his voice again. The enemy caught us on the hop, sir. Had no, no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. I feel like I made his voice deeper. It's fine. Of course, a veteran such as myself is only too aware that on every battlefield, you're just a not whisker from death at any moment. Are we still talking about a marital quarrel here? Well, I must say I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows such that surroundings are barely noticed. Oh my god! These witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have testified already. This may be a dead end. The antiques may well be right. Well, whatever the chances, we only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes, I'm afraid so. Very well, Council. Begin your cross-examination. All right, Santa. I will. Let's go. Me versus the vampire. Uh, the day you're referring to, we did have a bit of a skirmish. Hold it! The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. Yes, that's right. If I remember correctly, it was the love note, right? Yeah, it all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garadub. A rather passionate note, in fact. Oh, yo, wait, hold sec. Hold, oh my god. Hold on a sec. Do we have that note? Nah. Was the signature? I don't remember who it was. Could it have been Mrs. Green? I mean, we'd have it if it was relevant, right? Maybe we'll get it. I don't know. Let's see. Could be hallucinating that. Uh, but Mrs. Gerd had found the note discovering her husband's little secret. And she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it, too. What a sordid state of affairs. <laughs> 
Hello on Earth. Hello on Earth. Uh, he doesn't yell. <laughs> I say, what a chance does he have to recall such thing? It's common decency not to drag it up. Sorry, I made you British for a second. And besides, half of it was wide of the mark anyway. What? Half of it was wide of the mark? A likely story. These waters run very deep. And what transpired next after these multiple blows to the face? At least the slap heals. Uh, not the candlestick over, set fire to the carpet, got the window open. <gasps> Yeah, thanks for hiding that fact for seven years. And the fire also spread to some items of furniture, didn't it? The bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine, really. It just so happens there was some bath water around that evening, so I sloshed it about to put it out. Okay. The most precarious situation you put yourself in. Ours is a three-story townhouse on the west side of the street where the water main isn't connected yet. Have to draw water from my public water pump during the day if you need any, you see. The lodgers are always moaning that they can't get any water at night. Although, that little mustached Japanese man buys water in bottles, I believe. The defendant, Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, he receives a stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Can you imagine? Being able to brew a pot of tea at all hours, he's obviously very well off. Have you seen his apartment? Oh yeah, have you actually seen the state of the man? I believe he uses all of his income to buy books. Me too, man. Well anyway, the point is I was able to douse the fire with water, fortunately enough. Yeah. Uh, picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Hold it! Did you find a knife? Even though the room was on fire? As far as I was concerned at the time, he needed to die. It was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. What a woman wants to throw, she must throw. That is most certainly not true of a Suzano takedown, Mr. Naruhoto. How did she know I was thinking that? <laughs> well, you chucked me like three times, Suzano. So, uh, please cast your mind back and try to remember. Was a knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day? In all honesty, I don't recall. But I feel I must point out that I'm no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a towel, and a sponge. A napkin. With a knife on it? Well, you don't eat with a pocket knife, do you? Uh, hey, what's up? Excuse me. Do you have something to add, sir? Was it a pointy napkin? <laughs> Mr. Garadub! Hey, don't shoot! Ah, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind? Nothing of any significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles the old thing launched in my direction was somewhat more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and the fire poker, I seem to recall. Ouch. And the woman's aim was uncanny! She landed a direct hit with every bally! Yeah! Good grief, woman! We're not at home now! This is a court of law! Oh, dearie me. I'm so sorry, dear. What's she even doing with a teapot in here? Honestly, John, I would never have thrown such things at you, obviously. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, take a look at this, then. How do you suppose that happened, hmm? Your pipe, sir? Had this thing in my hand as usual at that time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles, she did. Yes. And when I went to pick the thing up, it was broken in two. I'd like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. I see. Your pipe was broken. It would never have been set flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyway, I've managed to bandage the thing up for now. Ha! Ah, you are too exaggerate. One, two, nope. You are one too exaggerate, aren't you, dear? I read that as execute because I've been watching a lot of Pokemon. Oh god, water, no! Ah, uh, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Uh, okay, water. It didn't get on my laptop, we're okay. Sorry, everyone, hold on. Let me just grab these paper towels with my ninja reflexes as I keep reading. Ha! Huh, I wonder what we should make of this account. 
please water do not come towards my laptop this is this is why i can't be a streamer because i am clumsy <laughs> because i talk with my hands you know how many times i spilled water during a video like more than five at least oh my god where is it going okay okay i'm sorry i'm almost ready all right, I don't want to have to edit this video, so Water, I'm going to need you to stop. Uh, it, uh, what should we make of this account? It could be important or it's insignificant. Uh, what, did they crack the pipe in two? Uh, oh, uh, well, the knife has a chip on the tip, right? I don't know if that's relevant. I guess if it hit the pipe, it could have broken the tip off the knife. But I was thinking more like, if the knife- well... If the knife stabbed the woman, maybe it broke off in her back? And that's how we'll connect them? But that doesn't really make sense. I mean, it could be, but we haven't heard about them finding a piece of a knife in her back, so I would guess it's not that. Alright, I cleaned it up pretty well. I'm just gonna lay my leg on it so my pants soak up the rest of it. Ah, engineering at its finest. I'm gonna say it could be important. It always could be, right? The defense believes Mr. Garadub's remarks just now to be of great significance. Objection! OBJECTION! Every time, dude, these war veterans' words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes, as well as hearts, may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of adding to their formal testimony. Indeed, common sense, one might say. What? <laughs> might one? In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Yeah, I want to break it in half again. Oh, well, like, don't see why not. Oh, dear me, there you go again, trying to ingratiate yourself with a young lady. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. She said a young lady. Does she know the woman, then, that wrote the note? Was it Miss- is Mrs. Green young? I well, she's Mrs., so she's married. So she's probably at least, like, an adult person. Anyways, okay, sorry, I'm just making sure the water's okay. Very well, the court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. Pipe has been entered. Uh, Mr. Gatup's pipe apparently fell to the floor. Oh, it broke on the floor? Fell to the floor during a domestic dispute he had with his wife and broke. Okay. I hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Narahodo. I, I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request was turned down. Oh, no, it's fine. Thanks to Suzato-san, we have some new evidence to work with. We should examine it carefully. Yeah, Suzato, don't apologize for being a badass. I don't ever want to hear those words come out of your mouth. Well, thank you for that re rebuttal, Mr. Garadub. Now if we could return to the crux of the matter. Uh, let's go look at that pipe. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Is that the knife? The... Uh, what the fuck is that? Oh, something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe there. That's called a chamber? I didn't know that. Yes, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What? What's this? It's a tiny fragment of metal. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? Surely it couldn't be. Oh, shit! This small piece of metal looks like it might be the tip of a knife blade stuck inside the bowl of Mr. Garadup's pipe. Okay. That is weird. So it struck right here? On a pipe? Really? Isn't this like a wooden pipe? Okay, sure. That's kind of weird. There's a small nick out of the bowl here. Look, it appears to have been made relatively recently. See how there are little scrapes and dents all over it? It's clearly a well-loved pipe. Yes, you're right. It seems to me recently that being well-loved goes hand-in-hand hand with... ...getting some battle scars. <laughs> this particular nick is catching my eye, though. Because it's clearly new. Huh. Interesting. It looks to be in a sorry state with that bandage around it, doesn't it? But for some reason, it feels slightly ominous to me. Like it's trying to shout out a warning. Probably because it's the same blue as Mr. Garadub's dressing gown. I suppose it must have considerable sentimental value to Mr. Garadub. 
And given that he's gone to the trouble of repairing it like this... Either that, or he can't afford to replace it. Okay... So can I look at this again? Uh... Oh wait, do I have a... No. Open! I wasn't sure if it updated to say that I found this. Let's see. Oh, look here, Mr. Naruhodo. Just to the tip. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. Wait, part of it's missing? I could be wrong, but I've just got a feeling... You remember this? Ah, that's... That's the tiny fragment of metal that we found inside Mr. Garadab's pipe. Yes, and just maybe. Oh my, it's a perfect fit. Uh, my voice, somehow I just knew it. They lied to me. Oh, but we're not gonna, okay, that's fine. Oh, no, okay. It updated without telling me it updated, the tip of which has broken off and was found inside Mr. Garadab's pipe bowl. Okay. Uh, da -da -da, crux of the matter. What oh, what can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? I don't know nothing about a knife. Plenty of knives around the place. Can't say I notice if one or two went missing. If that bally thing in the victim's back really was one of ours, you'll have a job proving it. Oh, I bet I I should save. <laughs> I only have one life. Hold on, hold on. Uh, save. I feel good about this though, right? But do I present the tip of the knife or the knife? It shouldn't matter. Sometimes I think they allow multiple answers. Objection. Ah, oh, really? Lame. I guess we'll try the tip of the knife. Or the pipe. Da 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 This? Objection. See, what? Uh, why does it matter? Mr. Garadub, could I ask you to take a good look at this, please? You can ask, but I can see a bully thing. You can't? You used to call me Dead Eye Deb back in the regiment, of course. But that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days. I struggle to tell a B from a D and I pay for my Q, to be honest. Oh, he does! Tearing me, it's rather wearing being asked about every other letter and every other word. You must D very dusty. <laughs> ah! You know, this is the humor I come to Ace Attorney games for, right here. Just that one sentence. He's like, I've had enough of your bullshit, Ryanosuke. What is that? A tiny scrap of metal? Yeah. Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. And the winner did the defense come by this evidence. <laughs> come by this evidence. It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadab's pipe. My, my pipe, you say? By Jove, I wonder how that got there. And what precisely does this fragment of metal signify, Council? Are you suggesting that it is in some way related to the matter of the stabbing on Briar Road? Well, I tried to present the knife, but y'all wouldn't listen to me. Now's the time. I am. Sam, I am. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record. I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of this case, my lord. Look, his butt was on fire, apparently. <laughs> huh. You appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, Consul. Overconfidence, my lord. That's the way we live here. Uh, very well then, present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence, when paired with this fragment of metal, allegedly reveals the truth of this entire case? Boom! Take that! Yeah, I should have saved, but whatever. Uh, this is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece at the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with the inferior blades sold at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave their tips lodged in their victim's bones. 
But did you find one, dude? And what of this particular knife? No doubt that Stip has suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Objection. No. No. <laughs> That's not the case. Gasp. The tip of this particular knife's blade is the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Garadab's pipe. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Good grief! Lord Van I... I don't believe it. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Yeah, bitch! G Good golly gosh! Order! 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 Is... Is this some sort of Eastern sorcery? What? Yeah. This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. Uh, am I talking too quietly for him? I think you can still hear it. A miracle! <laughs> so Van Zeeks has figured it out, has he? Council, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once! Yes, my lord. Uh, the crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Garadab's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent wins oh my god, uh -huh. recent wi witness testimony. There's so many asses. At the thing of my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked a clean out with one of her soft projectiles, she did. Yes. I would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. The knife. Oh, giddy, me. During the argument between these two that occurred just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mrs. Garadab flung this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Garadab, instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time. Which caused the tip to break off. Of course. Good lord! <laughs> yes, and that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadab's pipe. The, the chances of that are a million to one! Yeah, well, and yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the open window. So they're about to argue that a blunt tipped knife stabbed the woman in the back? Really now? Ah! In short, this knife, which fell from the window of the Garadab's house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below. Oh gosh! Oh dear! Oh! No! Sound like a ghost. Ooh! Oh! Yes, please, Van Zeeks. Crush that cup. Do it. Crush it. Throw it. Set it on fire. Go for it. Wazam! Oh. A full bodied theory, I'll give you that. Huh? A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points, plausibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. I don't know what words you're saying to me. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to bottling his argument. Sorry? I'm so confused. But after all, it is just a theory. The battle, I fear, is court. Because you see... Yeah! It's spoilt by an insurmountable inconsistency. An insurmountable... What?! Lord Van Zeeks, explain yourself! Get your foot off the desk where you raise in the barn! What is the same consistency you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. Ow! The victim was found with a knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her... Ah! Oh my god! That's right, you silly little man! Now, journal thing, what are you getting at so exciting about? Oh my... What? What are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck her had fallen from above... 
Yeah! There's no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. Yeah! Yeah, uh... That's not the problem I have with this, Van Zeeks. Order! Order! Quite right, you see, that's exactly right. If the knife had fallen on her from above, it would have struck her on the top of her head. Yeah, unless there was a flaming book on the ground that she bent to pick up. Well, um... Haha! -ha. He's lost for words, look! I knew it! I never liked his theory in the first place! I don't know, though, what really did happen? Huh. It would appear the defense has made rather a spectacular blunder. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Your theory, my learned friend, is history. Yo, you were a villain in a past life, man. I don't... You did the hand clench and everything. Uh, you were so close. I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now the way has been blocked completely by just one simple inconsistency. Or in other words, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency and the theory will stand. Miss Suzato. You mustn't worry, Mr. Naruhodo. You were just caught off guard, that's all, and your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is in the court record, I'm sure. All the information you need is there. Yeah, I... yeah. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks volumes. A ta uh, ta tacit tac tac it tac it <laughs> uh tacit a tacit acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. Yeah yeah. Objection. Ta tacit tac it. I only know tac a turn. Tac turn. This inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong track. It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test. I love tests! Yes! Ow, I smacked the ground. The knife fell on the victim from above. There's no way that it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? Counsel! There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have the answer. Oh god, this! Utter, utter madness! Or utter madness! <clears throat> surely, th uh, sh surely this must be the last time! Counsel, present the evidence of which you speak. It's a book! Deep breath. This is the last inconsistency, the final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence that explains how the falling knife became lodged on the victim's back is... Uh... the... Book or the picture? Let me just say real quick. I was looking to see how long the episode's being. We're good. Right, it's because she bent over to pick up the burning book that fell out of the building first. As a book lover, I would guess that's something she... No, he's the one who dropped all the books at the scene of the crime. Never mind. Uh, let's see... Should be this one. Take that! Yeah! This, the fourth book found at the scene. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The burnt book. Is that not Mr. Garadev's book? Yes, and to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question, and the victim holding it in her hand. But as we all know now, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. Quite so, as part of his wholesale transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true, however, as part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement on that point. 
da -da -da. but what made you place that book in the victim's hand? And he said, oh, well, Sa, that's because that's how I found it. <laughs> when we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. Yeah. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. Yeah. In other words, the victim had already picked the book up of her own volition. And clearly, that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Whoa, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd have been doing much of anything. Sorry, that wasn't funny. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hand? By, by Jingo. I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, Van Zeeks. We know that the book fell from the top floor of the Gerardem household under the pavement below. At precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment. The young woman was walking along the street in the light fog, when all of a sudden, a book fell right in front of her. The book I threw. Yes, Mrs. Garadab. And what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Well, I... I really can't imagine it, but I suppose... She might have reached down... And picked the book up? Yes! That is exactly what the woman in fact did! She picked up the book! Oh! Oh heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick the fallen book up... What position would her back have been in? That's right, facing the sky, completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking up the book... No. The next object fell from the room above, the jackknife, straight into the middle of her back. And at that same time, walking by chance directly behind Miss Green, was the defendant, Mr. Soseki Nuts um, Natsume. Will I never? Yeah, it wouldn't happen. It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor in the dark and the fog, and he didn't see the knife falling on her from above. Ah! And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident. And that is the real truth behind this case. Bow chicka wow wow, Van Zeeks. <clears throat> well, Mr. and Mrs. Garadub? You regret having a fight? The very first time you showed me that knife, I... I had my suspicions. I wondered if perhaps it might have been something like that. There, there, old bean. Poor Mrs. Garadab. Of course, I never meant for anything of the sort to happen, but... It was all my fault, wasn't it? Why does he look so mad? I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book. And I threw the knife as well. Yo, you were just gonna let an innocent man go to jail over an accident? Like, that just makes you look worse. John, dear. He's all right, I know. I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Truly. I'm sorry. Oh God, oh, oh. There she goes. Oh, he got her. Oh, he's, his legs are done. Romance! 
Oh, damn. Dude. Lord Van Zix, what news of Mrs. Garadab? She's been taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events had left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could easily have been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There is some good news, however, my lord. I have just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. It's strange. We've been talking about the victim all this time, but we've never once met her. How wonderful! The woman is out of danger, it seems. Yes, that, that is good news. So, Mr. Soseki Natsume! Yo! Dude, I don't even remember what voice I gave you. Ah, oh, um, yes! Something like that. On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture. And have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. Yep. Yeah. Poor guy. Aw. No, it is me who should be begging your pardon. No, oh, oh no, Mr. Ma Natsume. That evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she had been killed, too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. See, now that, like, Ryanoski brought up the fact that we've never seen her and everything, like, it, something feels wrong. You know? Like, normally things like that aren't said in these games unless, there, unless there's a twist coming that we just don't know about. But maybe, it, maybe there's not. I don't know. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to life here. I... I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog, like they're haunting me. Poor Suseki-san. His imagination really has got the better of him. Yes, poor man. So when it happened, I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should never have dropped my books like that and run away. I should have called for help, for a doctor, for the police! It's alright, dude. Instead, I've managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. And for that, I am truly sorry. Ah, No, dude, you're fine. One could say that some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lord Van Zeeks and our young lawyer here from the East, that chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. I heartily commend you both. Oh! Yeah, look at us being a team, Vampire Man. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Uh, yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? Guilty! No, I'm kidding. As the foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, I didn't suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. Ah! Sitting in for the old bean while she's out of action, you know. But I know what her decision would be. Does this mean I'll finally be able to get out of here and start work? Well, it's about time. I say I'll have a corker of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? Yeah, tell them the story of how if they're walking down the street they could get struck by a random knife because physics doesn't work anymore. That That's a great idea. Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman! Not 
guilty. Yeah. Not guilty. Ow, ow. Not guilty. Party in the USA. Not guilty. Oh. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. That one sounded like Leon. Not guilty. Yay! I actually feel good about this case. The last one, not so good. Well, well, very well, Mr. Soseki Natsume. I hereby pronounce you not guilty. Wow, 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 wow. Hey. Oh wow, Fly indoor fireworks. Okay, sure, that's safe. And finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, yes, Lord Sir. You are now a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture. And may you never again be brought before me. Oh, oh yes, sir. Of course. Come on, my life. I swear I'll never set foot in a courtroom again. I'm transported to tears. Yo, oh, God. Don't ever come to me again, either. Thank you, Councils. Court is adjourned. That crazy man. What a dude. Hey! 20th of February, 3.17pm, the old Bailey Defendant's Anti Chamber! Oh, locum! Oh, yeah. I was like, what? Wait, you, you mean me? Oh, of course! Is there another locum here? Is there even one? Compared to the original locum student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, 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 at last I'm free, I'm free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Heady, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I am pleased. Mr. Natsume is delighted. Would it be so hard just to say that then? Locum, you did it! You saved me from the brink! Well, what happened to the poor woman was in no way your fault, after all. Oh, after, oh my god, after all? I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, no, no! Not that! Lovely, loyal, locum, lawyer! Um, yes? I'm overwhelmed. I mean, as I said before, I have just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. And from high up windows, I see them looking down on me laughing. Look at that little hunchback! Oh dear. I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But! Today, you, locum lawyer, gave my gloom the boot. You stood firm behind that baronial bench before all those babbling British. You battled to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed, Behold the best barista ever born! Well, that's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. <clears throat> that hurt my voice. This has given me a wonderful anecdote to recount to my old friends back in Japan. An, an anecdote? Is that what's to become of all my hard work? <laughs> ah, there you are, my dear fellows. Uh, oh, shit. I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, what a pleasure to see you. I see I'm here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted, I'm glad to say. Oh. The trial shall begin presently, Mr. Norohodo, and I wish you the very best of luck. It's just finished. What? No! Then my haste was in vain. Ah! <laughs> it's, it's you! Hair, lock, Sholmes! Oh, have we met, sir? Um, this is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, oh, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either of your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. Charming. This is all your fault, Herr Lock Sholmes! You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. Yo, do it. My apologies, sir, but I assure you I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Ah. 
Had she been taken to the hospital more urgently? I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh. But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are but human after all. Anyone would have been shaken by such an experience. What did you do? I do feel very badly about how I behaved. Well, never mind. Now then, what was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Nothing. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Priceless. Oh, I am sorry, really, but... That was quite priceless. Poor Soseki-san. Still, on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And, it would seem, you were not even found guilty. But there is no bright side. Uh, whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? There's no windows in his room, I don't know. Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed by the spirits and... And now by the Reaper! Ah, Lord Van Zeeks. Oh yeah, he's gonna die now, that's right. I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed! It... it will be all be alright, Mr. Natsume. Huh? If the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, I will protect you. Hiya! Aw, oh, really? With a perfectly executed Suzato takedown. Uh, <laughs> much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of a warning might be nice next time, Miss Suzato. Damn, what a time to be alive. So, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences to your friends back in Japan? You gonna write a book? <laughs> yes, I... I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh. It has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I've visited universities, libraries, bookshops. I've been honored with the tutelage of professors. I've learned so much about the wealth of literature here in the city it has shaped. And I've come to realize that it is my calling to sail home and tell my fellow countrymen about it. That's very touching, Mr. Natsume. Or in perhaps less veiled terms. You wish to withdraw halfway around the world? To escape the terror of the Reaper's curse? That's not it at all! A little bit. The more I learn of literature, the more this strange feeling claws at my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to pen a work of my own. Oh, I see. A work of literature by Soseki-san. Could be an interesting read. And what about Miss Suzato and yourself, Mr. Narahodo? Sorry? What about us? Will you return to Japan alongside your mustache compatriot? Why would we? A week has not yet passed since we arrived in London. And only now does it feel as though we have finally found our feet. And you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right, but we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've calculated we can only afford another ten nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you could take my lodgings. Oh, the windowless room? Ah, but what it lacks the windows. It more than makes up for with a floor, a ceiling, and walls. Great. And of course, I'd be happy to leave behind the accursed evil spirit. Oh my, an evil spirit? Is it the cat? Oh yes, it tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's, it's an infallible wake-up call. It's the cat. Well, think about it, if that's all right. Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? Really? Well, a vacancy has conveniently presented itself. Though it is up in the attic, I might add. Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady this very morning on the matter of price, and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of. 
Oh, this is simply wonderful. What an honor to be invited to take lodgings in the great detective's office's attic. I'm... I'm too overcome for words. So, suggesting we look elsewhere is out then. Then it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. And you must come too, Mr. Natsume. I insist. I, I, I don't know what to say, but thank you, and yes. Wonderful. Then I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal re oh my God, formal release, Mr. Natsume. It shan't take long. Somebody's happy. Ah, squat up. Welcome. I, I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Likewise, Mr. Natsume. It's been a privilege meeting you too. It's a shame that we're gonna have to say goodbye so soon. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But Lokum, we'll meet again one day. Maybe in the sequel. Uh, yes, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. Well, my dear fellow, our cabbage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Norahodo? Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I've little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. You have doubt he will or he won't? And so, with Soseki-san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sholmes to what was to become our new home, 221B Baker Street. Oh my god, just saying that hypes me up. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, I'm fine. Oh, it's an attic! Alright, I'm gonna save here. This episode's getting really long. I was like, oh, I at least want to end the chapter, but like, damn, I don't want it to get too long. We ended the case. We'll check out our new attic like we're in freaking Persona 5 next time. Uh, but hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I, um... You know, I'll talk about it more next time, but I still think the suspension of disbelief there was a little strong. The fact that a knife could ricochet off a window and go stab a woman at a force enough to, like, go through her back... Her coat and her back. Like, I don't think that's... Who knows? What do I know? I'm just an engineer. It's <laughs> it's fine. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're still enjoying the series. As always, feel free to leave a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe. Whatever you guys are feeling. And until the next time, lights off, dark out.